I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit more now about transference, because in emphasizing there um, the idea that one might help facilitate or be there in a way to hear at the right moment where their desire to know can be assisted, so to speak, I suppose that's one way of thinking about the transference. Um, but you, you more specific, um, you discuss the question of transference in terms of the reversal of a relationship to knowledge. You discuss the problem of bridging the gap between psychotic and non-psychotic experience as part of the challenge that the non-psychotic clinician might be faced with. So I'm wondering if you could say something about how you think transference, how you redefine transference. And just to, to emphasize the point, I mean, I think that's a really crucial contribution that your book makes um, to the thinking of psychosis and, and, and the relation of psychoanalysis to psychosis more generally. So any thoughts you had would be uh, much appreciated. Yeah, so um, there's several things there, I think. The two more sort of um, basic ones is, you know, again, this idea of the reversal of the transference, which is, um, I mean, uh, Apollon talks about that and others, but Again, I think, and we, I touched on it, maybe I didn't use that term today, but um, reversal. So I guess in the stock sort of Lacanian idea of uh, neurotic transference, the, there's the analyst who's the taken as the subject supposed to know, which in some sense, at least in this way I'm thinking about it now, is, uh, you know, uh, in the field of the ego and where the analyst is in this position of the one who can heal or, or knows better sort of the good doctor, that kind of thing, which of course is the position that as an analyst working with neurosis, you don't want to necessarily respond from, right? We want to respond from the place of the unconscious or this kind of thing. Uh, so well, that's reversed, right? So that's what the reversal re refers to in psychosis. Generally speaking, uh, kind of conceptually, we say that the psychotic does not suppose the analyst to know, they know which is what, what Lacan means by, you know, as being a sec good secretary, just take notes. Um, Cause they, they're there to teach you about what they know about the law, which is in the most abstract sense. And it's kind of problem. Um, so this is the reversal in, it, of the transference in the beginning or maybe throughout with psychosis. It's what's reversed is that um, we have, <clears throat> I think have to make sure that we, um, again, respect uh, the psychotic's discourse as knowledge. So that's the knowledge, you know, that's the reversal of the relationship to that knowledge. And of course, then there's the other mm, knowledges that, that are, are not just delusional, right? That come from the person's subjective history, traumatic history, um, which I get into in the book in terms of how through the dream work, another way of working with the delusion, how through the dream work, the delusion is challenged and what comes up instead of uh, uh, the others that populate their delusion, you have others and their life growing up, their subjective history, traumatic encounters. Anyway, that's kind of another uh, discussion, but that's another knowledge that emerges under transference. So, I mean, I think it's why we'd say that, you know, transference is def as defined, it's not the affective transference that Freud said that, you know, which is sort of, was that model of transference, I suppose, that is not possible or not needed in psychosis, which is what people refer to in Freud, where, you know, the, the impasse of transference, um, which Lacan talks about too. Um, but there's this um, transference defined as a desire to know. And in the beginning, that transference or that, that mode needs to be sustained by the analyst. Say, for example, in the face of the person I described, where there was no desire to know, there was a desire to, desire to explain to me. But I, I tried to just never give up the desire to know, since I have this idea of psychosis as something that's more than that, right? That there's something going on where she needs to be in that illusion. So, but she that's the ethical choice, is to take up the desire to know on the side of the analysis or the person in, the in that position, it's, the, it's one way out or out too, too much, but you know, kind of one way to work. 
So that's, that's I mean, for me, transference reversal, but also then redefined, I suppose, as purely a kind of desire to know, not the affect of transference or working with the transference in different ways uh, that you know, other, dis other um, schools have, I think, or thinking about, which is maybe more dualistic. It's always with a question, I think, with an orientation toward knowledge. Uh, that's contained in delusion and the discourse of the ego or and in the unconscious, I think. Um, and there is a question of what is the unconscious in psychosis, I think. But um, And then the second other part that you bring up that's the last part of the book, I think, on the bridging the gap, that's sort of a different, something I'm trying to work on there uh, that has directly to do with transference, but I, I think I'm trying to explore something, intervene in, in, in sort of the more uh, orthodox notions of the position of the analyst, for example. So, um, I mean, it's a long story, but it, more or less, uh, I'm also drawing on the work of Francoise Defwan there in History Beyond Trauma and her late husband, um, Max uh, Godier, Jean-Max Godier, um, in History Beyond Trauma because she's a very, they were, and she still is a very interesting thinker kind of within, within and from without the Lacanian field, I think, in terms of her work with extreme states for a very long time and psychosis. And, you know, for me coming to a limit with what had been my sole, more or less conception of the position of the analyst as sort of the absent other in some way and sort of reaching various impasses you could say in the transference or in my trying to you know, work with someone. Um, and so I began to explore um, it in terms, this experience I was having in terms of this gap, you know, be, between the psychotic and the non-psychotic or the clinician and the non-clinician or something. Um, but um, the point being, that uh, there's this question of um, the term they use is uh, zones of non-existence, uh, which open up between people, you know, in this case, clinician and the person experiencing psychosis or madness or tr extreme trauma, uh, which um, the clinician has to enter into or, and or the question is maybe acknowledge in some ways. So now we're getting into, it's a terrible, it's not a great term, but this question of self-disclosure, which I then argue is not necessarily a disclosure of self per se, right? I, I think this, this field of uh, death or this uh, zone of non-existence, of non-being, of erasure, is a more universal experience of the human. And I think it becomes, I would argue that it's at stake in any structure, any clinical experience, because I think it's fun. This kind of zone of, this question of non-existence and void uh, sort of come before the question of structure. You know, as we were talking earlier, you know, structure or neurosis or psychosis, I think are, re are responses, the subject's response. Mm -hmm. It's just my mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, so I, I, you know, in their book, I draw in their book a bit and sort of the clinical examples in the case of of Henry, um, where um, the clinician, the analyst is called upon in, in a, a very specific way by a very psychotic, traumatized patient. And he notices that she is off in some way. And I think he says, there's a shadow over you on your face. Uh, and she deflects it or, or sort of, gives a kind of a, a sort of non-response, typical maybe of a more stock analytic position, but later realizes that was insufficient because now he's threatening to leave. And so she chooses, I mean, anyone can go read this in her book, but she, she chooses then later, very soon, but later to admit that I believe she had come from a funeral and to really make the point, there was, it's not just that it was a funeral, it's that there was a failure of words. There was a failure, something was very much unrepresented about this death. 
So there's this question of trauma without representation or so by definition trauma, I suppose. Um, and she had a way of speaking to that and of that to the patient. So acknowledging that. So that was very interesting to me because, and I think maybe it would strike others the same way, but it, it, it was a bit at odds with my training mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my formation and sort of my conceptual coordinates and what's okay and what's not, what, what, what one should do, what's ethical. And so I just think it's a very interesting problem. And so when I get into, I mean, these metaphors start to clash or fail, but you know, this, the bridge is, is, is I guess, over this, <laughs> over this zone, but you know, it's not really a bridge over because you have to be in it, right? I think I say, you know, the zone of non-existence is a threshold we have to cross. It's the price we have to pay. And the experience, again, getting to fear again, or, or certain experiences in the analyst, in the, in the face of these kinds of presentations, um, I, I suggest that maybe they're not all just counter transference, right? That there, there may be some zones here where it's just different for the analyst and the stakes are maybe different and the analyst suffers too, or has is, is sort of suffering is, is, is part of the ticket, uh, the price of the ticket. Um, what does that mean? I mean, there's a lot there, but anyway, that's just sort of, so that's, a, that's different, or that's sort of, you know, in a way beyond sort of this reversal and of the transference and the desire to know those are more settled ideas, I think. I, I'm just trying to work through something that, and it's helped actually in my practice, you know, to sort of, not that I've settled anything, it's still sort of very mixed, but uh, it's allowed me to connect with people, I believe, in, in, in new ways or to create the possibility for work that I, I found was not possible. 